Hey guys, Matt Piper, MPTV, the soccer mentor. Hopefully, hopefully I'm inspiring some of you out there. But this next story, I really wanted to tell this story for a while. Uh, I've told it on Twitter in short before. Um, it's one for my Sunderland fans. But it's one for everyone really because it's about a derby game. And, and, and I've played in... Leicester City v Derby County, which is a big one for the Leicester City fans and the Rams. Never played in a Leicester City Nottingham Forest because I know that one's probably even probably got even more hype to it. But I've played in Leicester City Derby. Uh, we lost 3-0, so it was gutting. And but I did see when I came out of the ground at the end, I did see like fans really wounded, uh, and I thought it's probably best not to go out tonight because we did really get battered 3-0 at home by Derby County in the Premier League in 2002, I thought, mm -mm, not going out. Um, because as a Leicester fan myself, I felt gutted. So I could only imagine what it was like for some of the hardcore fans. Um, it, it, and it made me, feel, made me feel horrible. Did I play? Did I play well? No. Was I okay? I was alright in that game. Uh, I was one of our better players. I think I even won um, Leicester City man of the match for that player, for that um, for that for that particular game. Um, so I had done all right, and I was only an 18, 19 year old kid, um, and it was my first experience of a proper Premier League derby, which brings me on to Sunderland, and uh, I signed for Sunderland, and about six or seven games in, I remember Peter Reid. He called me in the office. He said, Matt. He said, uh, now you need to know, this is, this is a big one for, for all of us and especially for the fans. Like We had Newcastle away, this was probably on a Tuesday. And he said, I'm going to play you. I want you to bring all that energy and when you get the ball, be brave, go at people, um, commit people, commit tackles. He said, it's a derby so it will be hyped up, it's a big one. And he really, he really put that emphasis to me, what what kind of level that game was at. Um, and I remember turning around to him and said, Gaffer, I've played in a um, I've played in a derby before, Leicester v Derby, Derby Counter. And he was like, this is this is twenty five thousand times more intense than that game. And I thought, no chance. Uh, because obviously I was uneducated, I didn't know at the time and, and I knew I could see the build up in the paper that the game was big and the fans before the game they'd come down and they'd, they'd be at the training ground and like good luck and there was like when we got on the coach and we was heading towards Newcastle I started to get a bit nervous because there was some Sunderland fans out on the streets and like all cheering and so I thought wow this is this is going to be a big game but nothing could have prepared me for when we actually got to Newcastle's ground it was it was chaos everywhere people running everywhere, um, fans, our bus was getting rocked by the Newcastle fans, we've seen all the Sunderland supporters getting led in by police on horseback and things, I was like, oh my word, this, this is huge, and a lot of people have said to me after that game, and I, I realise why now, that it must be one of the biggest derbies in the world, and I, I truly think it is, some, some people that I tell now that to, and they don't know about Sunderland and Newcastle, and things like that. People look at me as if to say, Sunderland, Newcastle, big, but honestly, it's huge. So anyway, the story of that day, we got on the bus, we go, the bus is getting rocked, and I, I'm sure, I, well, I'm not sure, but I think it's one of the only games where the Newcastle staff and people, they let, and the police, they let all the um, Newcastle fans right under, the, under, when you drive into Newcastle Stadium, um, when you're a player of the opposing team, you come in on the coach and it comes right under the tunnel of the ground. I think most I think most Premier League clubs they do that for, but then what they do or they did for this game is let all the Newcastle fans right more or less touching the bus. So they're right close. And then it was um, police on horseback from the coach door to the player's entrance. So you've just got like a tunnel and the rest is Newcastle fans everywhere. And, I, and it was intimidating, it was intimidating, that's probably why they do it. Um, so anyway, I get off the coach with my little Louis Vuitton wash bag thinking, yeah, yeah, because I had been playing quite well for Sunderland in my first five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten games. Um, and I was on quite a high, I was playing quite well. Got off the bus, 
started walking up between between the horses and people are shouting abuse I could see people spitting and, blah, blah. and then all of a sudden some some geezer between two horses backs um, said oi Piper so I looked like that and how can you explain it he just he did this noise and I was just too late in reacting and he would at me, on my shoulder, on my neck, on my wash bag. Oh, my Louis Vuitton wash bag! Oh. It, it, so, and I was angry. I tried, I tried to, you know, swipe at him. And then the policeman said, keep moving. So, went into the ground. I was angry. I was wiping his spit off. I was warming up on the pitch. Still angry about that. So I thought, I'm going to score today. And, and I'm going to, I'm going to do, I just had all that anger inside me still. Which was probably not a good thing. Because in the first couple of minutes, uh, and I've told this story on Twitter before as well, but it's harder to tell on Twitter because you've got the 140 characters, but I can tell it properly now. I, um, Craig Bellamy got the ball and, he, and I was playing sort of, I was in like a right wing back position. I was standing in the box, well, I was on the edge of the box. He started to run at me and everyone knows how quick Craig Bellamy is. I mean, I was quick, but this guy was lightning. And, and, and he pushed it by me in the box and I knew he was in the box and I, I sort of read where he was going so I started to go early to try and keep up with him I got to the ball we got to the ball about the same time and he had given me about five yards so that's how quick he was so I leant on him in the box poof, shoulder and he went down and all the, all the stadium went up ah penalty penalty so I was like oh no and the ref blew his whistle so I thought he's given a penalty. So I see the ball there. I think he's given a penalty, probably getting a yellow card. He was going to shoot Craig Bellamy, but I don't think he was in a goal scoring position. So I wasn't fearful of getting sent off. But I see the ball there. So I ran up to the ball. If anyone, I don't know if anyone's got this, but I, I kicked it into the crowd or I kicked it away. And I thought I'd kicked it on the floor. I don't know if I did. I don't know exactly, but this is how I remember it. I don't know if someone kicked it after me because after the game, so anyway, we get beat 2-0, Bellamere, and, uh, but I kicked, sorry, I kicked it away into the crowd or away, and uh, the referees gave a dive against Craig Bellamere, and it was our free kick, because I just lent on him with my shoulder and he dived. So we had a free kick, and so it was, and anyway, in the end, we get beat 2-0, sheer up Bellamy score, the, the great Gary Speed. Um, didn't really know him personally as a man, but the few times I did speak to him and when I played against him, always a gentleman, um, wonderful football lot, honour and a privilege to play against him and it, it's such a shame that he's gone, but um, he played in that game, played well as well. Um, and so we got beat 2-0 and after the game we're all sitting in the stadium, in, in the um, dressing room, gutted. Um, Peter Reid really didn't have much to say. He was he was he was really down, like all the players were, and and the fans were gutted, um, probably as well because after a after a Newcastle Sunderland game, the away fans have to stay in the ground for about half an hour afterwards to make sure like all the home home crowd's gone. Um, so they're they're sitting there, just got beat two 0 and they got to sit in the stadium for even longer. It must have been horrible. Um, so we were, all, we were all in there, gutted, and there was a knock at the, at the dressing room door. And it was two policemen, or a steward and a policeman. Uh, and they said, is, um, is Matthew Piper in here? Uh, and the physio or whoever answered the door said, yeah, yeah. So they called me out, I went out into the, into the hallway in the, in the stadium. And they said, um, we don't know if you realize, but quite early on in the game, you kicked the ball in anger, and, and you hit an old lady, or a lady, in the crowd, and she was concussed. I was like, flipping out, I didn't kick it that hard, did I? And they said you did, but I don't know, i still not never seen the video, so I don't know if I did. It sounds unlike me, to be honest, but they said, this is what they said, that I kicked the ball, and it's ended up going in the crowd, and it's hit her, and concussed her, and she had to be taken away to to hospital to be checked over or, or to the St John's ambulance and, and she missed most of the game or all of the game. So it would be nice if you could um, you know, send a gesture or send a letter of apology or 
So I said, well, she can have my shirt. So I took my shirt off, my Sunderland shirt. She must have been gutted. She must look, use it around the house now as a duster or clean a car or something. And uh, I signed it and, and I said, I put obviously, sorry, um, to her on it. And, and, I, and I sent her that. So not to, be, not to be horrible in any way, but I thought it was a nice touch. She gave a Premier League shirt, um, albeit off her bitterest rivals. Um, so it was a little bit tongue in cheek. I hope she's seen, seen the bright side to it. Obviously, I wrote sorry on it. Um, but that was just a little story and a little um, inside, inside little caption, a li inside little what I wanted to share, especially with the Sunderland fans, so they 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 knew what it was like on on game day for a player. As, but from my point of view, that's what it was like. Um, one of the most intense games, I think the intense game I ever played in. Loved it. Obviously, we got beat two 0 so that was that was not good. But I absolutely loved it. Loved my time at Sunderland. Um, I've got Kieran Dyer's shirt. I think I got it from that game. He signed it to me as well. Um, and, and just to make the Sunderland, the Sunderland fans feel a little bit better, I actually do use his shirt to clean the house in the car and stuff. Um, because even though I only played at Sunderland, I, only put, I was there for five years, nearly five years, and I... I didn't play too often, and I know that um, because of injury. But it was. I, I'm Sunderland. I feel. I feel I'm less than mad. I'm also Sunderland mad. Uh, that's why when they play each other this season, it's going to be. I, I'm not going to watch the game. I don't think because I don't know who I want to win. I'm Leicester born and bred, so m most people think Leicester that I would. But Sunderland. Does hold such a such a great place in my in my life, and I still still always watch for their results every every week, and I want them to do well, like I want Leicester to do well. So that was just a little feather in the cap for the Sunderland fans. I've got his shirt hanging up here, but nice lad, Kieran Dyer, great player, suffered with injury like me. It's just the fact it's a Newcastle shirt use it to clean my chalkboards when my clients have been in and the car and the house. Um, yeah, it's actually quite a good dust up. But anyway, hope you enjoyed the story. Uh, I'm going to keep putting them out. I think it's important, especially for the next generation, to hear things like this from a, from a footballer. They're not all going to be, they're not all going to be riveting, inspiring stories. I'm, I'm going to put the stuff out there as well that, that's not great, that I felt wasn't great with my career. And so, so young, inspiring footballers can see both sides of it uh, and hopefully learn from some of, the, some of the good things that I say and some of the mistakes that I made with my career because there was plenty of them as well. But hope you enjoyed the story. Make sure you subscribe. I'll see you for the next video. Thanks.